we go. Hello again, Calvary Baptist. Hello, hello, hello. hello. This I'll is Pastor this Andy week. and Pastor Stewart, and we're hey. here for the recap, recap, recap. And first off, Pastor Stewart, yes. uh, the state of the church, Stanton, and the world. So any announcements? We, need, we didn't even talk about this ahead of time. Usually, Yeah, I, I know. Stuff so coming I'm, up. I'm a little blank. Uh, just our next big thing at church, instead of state of, is, is fall blues are coming in just a couple of weeks now, 29th. The 30th. 30th, day 30th. before Halloween. Right, day before uh, the, the, the Halloween thing. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a big day, great day on a Saturday afternoon, and uh, just hope you come out and you tell a little bunch of other people to come out. We, we, were, we need a big, a big uh, outpouring. Um, yeah. To add to that, we still need a lot of candy. Yes. So, folks, bring in candy. If you're hoarding please. it at home, waiting for the last minute to just dump it all, uh, please uh, be nice to Pastor Stephen because he's and getting really workers. concerned that we don't have enough. So bring it in now. Uh, if you've got it, um, I know there are some sales that come up, but you know how all that works. So bring in that, that stuff. Now, regarding Stanton, it's kind of, kind of fun. The uh, weather is not quite changing yet. <laughs> Still a little bit warm, but next Tuesday, uh, my wife told to me to change to 30s. That, yeah, that night, yeah. 39. So get your fireplaces ready. I know yeah, we are. Yeah. So it's going to be exciting. So um, the weather's, as far as the state, the nation, we're in a big mess. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. Yes. Uh, this is fantasy literature from 50 years ago coming yep. true. Yep. Um, and uh, not fantasy, based in reality, uh, really a warning, but we're getting there anyway. Yeah. Um, elections are coming up. But elections so are coming up. Please, so vote get registered. Early, vote often. <laughs> That's a joke. In case That's you're a wondering. joke. Yes. So, and I um, won't finish it. Get that done. I don't want to be political. Right, get anyway. that done. All right, Pastor Stewart, let's yes. move into... Um, things that you talked about this past Sunday. So yes. uh, hap what happened in Genesis 24? Now, I, I don't know if you've seen any of the recaps, so we put a little timer on you uh, oh, really? for the recap. Now, Genesis oh, 24 yeah, is, the long is the longest? Other longest than chapter Psalm, in, Psalm 119. Longest chapter yeah. in the... Uh, in Genesis. Yeah, sure. well, I recapped it one, one sentence Sunday, which is okay. Genesis 24 is... Okay, here we go. Ready? Boom. Abraham's wife, Sarah, died. Abraham gets his chief servant to go find a wife for his son Isaac amongst his family back in Ur. And he is successful and brings her back to Isaac. Yeah, I love the last, wow, that was awesome. That was awesome. I love the last uh, line or two, verse or two of this chapter. Mm -hmm. And Isaac was comforted yes. at the loss of his mother. His mother, yep. That's, that's very tender right. right there. Right, And the, but the, the little thing that most people don't catch is it is also an allegory, though it's a true story, all allegories are true stories that can mean something else as well. And what it meant was the servant is never named in the chapter, though it tells us who he is. And we know his name is Eliezer. And he's not named in the idea of the allegory because the Holy Spirit has never been named to humans. Hmm. We don't know his name. We only know his title. So the title of servant and the Holy Spirit serves the purpose of God amongst the people as well as he completed all the works of God he moved in creation. He, he was the one who did the miracles of Jesus, the person of the Trinity that actually performed it. Jesus had to trust the Father and the Spirit to, you know, when he goes out on a limb and calls Lazarus out of a grave. Mm -hmm. He had put aside his power to do that on his own. He had to depend on the Holy Spirit to do it. So Eliezer, this represents the Holy Spirit in the allegory to get a bride for the Son of the Father. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit's job is to bring together the bride, the church, for the son to be presented to her That's at the neat. second coming. So it's a cool allegory. And, and uh, then some people, if, if you go too far with an allegory, then you start picking out little details and yeah, making them mean yeah. stuff it doesn't mean. That's where you want to go. Just relax. Yeah, it, yeah. but it is, a, it is a graphic and very accurate picture of what God's going to do in the New Testament for us and how that comes about, basically. Yeah. Cool. Well, one of the things that came to my mind um, uh, was... Um, you and I talked about this term, a mechanistic oracle. Woo, we talked about it because he taught me that term like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and basically a, a mechanistic oracle, it's a fancy way of saying, um, God, what is your will? I'm going to do this. If this is your will, then you do that. Right. So you, you're setting up a system where uh, the yes looks like this, the no looks like that. Yeah. It is a set mechanism, just like a motor always does a certain thing. You're right. setting that up. Um, well, and yeah, and, and just the idea of all that, 
uh, human beings are, can never be 100% certain because we have one thing we cannot do, and that is look into the future. Mm -hmm. um, and people want to look into the future as evidenced by necromancers and fortune tellers, all mm -hmm. of whom are either uh, lying charlatan is going to take your money or inspired by the devil mm -hmm. and going to take your money. Mm -hmm. um, there's no middle ground on that. Right. Um, but the people in the Old Testament didn't have a completed word of God, and so they needed God to speak to them. In the New Testament, we have the completed work of God, but we want to know, do I marry Sally or Susie? <laughs> and, and God doesn't say that in the scripture. Mm -hmm. right. And so um, human beings at both sides of, that, of the cross um, want to know the will of God, but the Bible tells us in the New Testament, Romans 12, 1 and 2, not to have your mind uh, conform to the image of the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind in the word so we can prove what the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is. Mm -hmm. So if we walk with God and we saturate ourselves in the word, he will, he will, we prove it by doing the will of God. I mean, we don't mm -hmm. prove it like, yep, that's the will of God, I can prove that. The proof is in the pudding and actual the doing of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that term you use, which I can't say it correctly, so I'm not gonna say it right A now. Mechanistic oracle. Mechanistic oracle. Um, so in the Old Testament, uh, the classic example is Gideon put out a fleece, and so now it's become, that's what he called, he took a lambskin, threw it on the ground, said, okay, if all the ground's wet and the lambskin's dry, no, that's what you want me to do. Well, the next day that was true, and then he's like, yeah, but, you know, something could have protected it and the dude Let's didn't fall on around. it. Yeah. So he flipped it around, which would have been a bigger miracle. If the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, well, then that's definitely God. Mm -hmm. So then he trusted that once he got it. So mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine uh, is, is going to become a pastor at a church in Oklahoma. He wasn't looking to be a pastor was passing through, stopped this church. They asked him to be the pastor. Um, a lot of things around that, but, but I just have been told the story. He, since he wasn't looking to be a pastor, in the, as he drove away and was praying about it, he said, well, Lord, if you do these four things, I don't even know what they mechanism. were. Mechanism. That's, right, that's, that's the mechanism. Yeah. And before he got home, driving home uh, from Oklahoma to Virginia, all four things had happened in the right order exactly. Mm. It would have been, you know, a million to one chance mm -hmm. and just saying that metaphorically but it happened and so he was like okay well so let me now yeah. look into it this is yeah. something god wants me to do so well let me back out of that just a little bit because that turned out really well for your friend right but so not everybody in chapter 24 is not everybody goes that way though right um and tell us some of the dangers of, of setting up something yeah. like this well um the devil's not this, this not the normal way right. of walking with the Lord. Right. If, if that's all you do, um, surprisingly, uh, I'm going to use a reference from the great theologian, um, The Twilight Zone. <laughs> and uh, there was a, a, a show once where this young couple, they're on their honeymoon trip, and they stop at this little town, and they go in a cafe, and, you know, this thing's set in the 50s, and there's this new little device, and you put in a penny or a nickel or something, and it would it would give you a little fortune. And so their fortune said, don't leave town today, you know, or you're gonna die if you leave. Or Ooh, I'd set up so well. And so it shows them every day they're going, maybe today we'll get to go. And they keep feeding the thing money and getting these weird, and at the end they, they go away kind of dejected and it shows this old couple come in and they go, maybe today. And they put in a coin. Oh, creepy. Yeah, and it's like, it, it was just weird. It was meant to be like a little joke thing, uh -huh. and they took it so seriously. So we can be misguided mm -hmm. if we put out, you know, God, if you turn the blue sky purple today, you know, mm -hmm. or some odd thing like that. Well, some people equate things like uh, a blood moon. Yes. You know, the, right. when there's a, uh, or solar eclipses, or, you know, things according to the stars. Yeah. And so that's a big deal. So we, I know... Making a decision on a job, well, that's a big deal too, but it, it, it gets even worse in crazy detail yeah. too. Yeah, So, and, and the reason we're even talking about this is in Genesis 24, that servant said, Lord, if you, the, the first girl that I ask to water my camels, because he, he took 10 camels across mm -hmm. the desert, they get there, he goes to a well, and, and instead of looking for Abraham's family, which was his assignment, he asked God to bring her to him and evidenced by 
if I ask her for a drink of water, she volunteers to water my camels. Mm -hmm. Which was a big deal. Which was a huge yeah, deal because you very well. a camel, Boy, they suck up water. a thirsty camel can drink um, 50 gallons of water in three minutes. A non-thirsty camel can drink 20 to 30 gallons of water in 10 minutes. And she watered 10 camels that had just crossed the desert mm. out of a jar. So she was going, had to go down into a well. It wasn't a little up. mason jar. It, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> it was anywhere from 250 to 500 gallons of water. And she's carrying a jar of water up and down mm. to all the camels. And he went, hey, God mm -hmm. just answered my prayer. Because yeah. the normal person went, well, okay, I'll help you out. But uh, that's mm -hmm. enough. You do the rest. I'm yeah. gone. I liked how you pointed out. I, and I, was, I missed part of the service because okay. we had some technical problems. Yep. But the, one of the parts I did catch was... The, that fit in with some of the qualifications yeah. that uh, the servant knew would be required of hospitality, of this woman. kindness, yeah, generosity. hardiness. There, there's a hardiness. hardiness yeah, yeah. Um, and and one commentator said she had a heart like Abraham's, his father. Mm -hmm. That she was hospitable and generous. Mm -hmm. But it was Abraham's family. It was his nephew, and this mm -hmm. was his niece, uh, basically. And so, uh, yeah, so. That it seemed to run in the family, this kind mm -hmm. of attitude. But, yeah. um, but Eliezer lays out this kind of thing that you're talking about, a mechanism that, okay, God, if you do this, I know you're leading me. Now, he proved it by... Um, in other ways. Yeah, yeah by saying, hey, uh, can I stay at y'all's house? She goes, I'll go ask my brother. The brother mm -hmm. goes, sure. Comes out, gets him. They, they make him a meal. He says, before I eat, let me tell you why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Because now he feels confident enough to probe the actual person yeah, let's get a little deeper. whether are you will am, am i reading this right are you willing to follow what i'm telling you i believe god's will is mm -hmm. and she was and they mm -hmm. did and we're yeah. here today because then jesus got to be born later yeah um but yeah it's it's a cool thing and i i what i would have always said about this now that we're talking about it, i think better when i talk i didn't say this earlier <laughs> is that the bible says in romans 12 1 and 2 that what I've already said in Psalm uh, 32 uh, verses 9 and 10 or 8 and 9. It talks about don't be like a horse having to be guided with a bridle. I will instruct you and teach yeah. you in the way you should go. You know, acknowledge the Lord and he'll guide you in all your paths. So, so we kind of trust that God's guiding us. But there are those times where we really want him to do something. Mm -hmm. And usually when the circumstances seem to be fairly equal. Yes. Both, both seem to be wise. Right. Not, not this is... The, I know this is the sin, good and, the good. and this is not sin. That's, you know, that's a done deal. Right. So if you're ever wondering, should I marry an unbeliever? The answer right. is no. It's already been decided. So, so what I would say is determine what you believe to be God's will through Scripture, prayer, mm -hmm. prompting. And then other Christians around you, what do they say about it? Not just the casual, but like they've mm -hmm. prayed, they know you, whatever. And then maybe a mechanism, a mechanistic you got oracle. It. Yeah. <laughs> and, but never, those are co confirmatory. Foundational right. is knowing right. the Word of God and right. being there. Mm -hmm. So it can be a confirmatory, Ooh. but not a foundational. Mm -hmm. So most people want to make, okay, God, if you save me from dying in this foxhole, I'm going to be a monk. I'll be, I'll be a monk. <laughs> that was a mechanism right. for Martin Luther. <laughs> yes, which thankfully he did. But, but that that God saving you or doing some act, physical act in your life which shocks you should be confirmatory, mm -hmm. not foundational. Right. You shouldn't ask God to do something if you haven't been seeking him, looking for. Mm -hmm. Try to determine in yourself what you believe to be God's will with the best. Mm -hmm. God gave you good sense and he expects you to use it. Mm -hmm. um, he don't ask for the miraculous when the when the standard will do. Mm -hmm. But all of us have those times. I mean, I've fasted before I asked my wife to marry me. I fasted mm -hmm. as I was looking, does God want me to come to Calvary? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but that was to find the idea of the will of God. Then right. he just gave me some stuff that I didn't even ask for. It's like, okay, yeah, this is where God's leading. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes me think of something, Pastor Stewart, about um, our walk with the Lord. And I wrote this down, um, it, it's walking with the Lord is foundational mm -hmm. with yes. to be a, a Christian. Yeah. And some of those uh, standard disciplines mm -hmm. I've discovered um, are so crucial. And yeah. you, you've already mentioned a few, and that yeah. was 
Um, Bible study, you, prayer. You must be reading your Bible. Right. If you are opening your Bible and going, oh Lord, if I'm going to put my finger down on a spot and that's going to be my word for today. You've just set up a mechanism and that is a poor, right. poor way of determining what God's will right. is, what His word is for you today. Right. However, I have heard of times when God actually used yeah, it in a, in a, in a gl God glorifying way. Right. But if that's the way I'm always walking with yeah. Him, that's not walking. That's always putting God to the test. Yeah. And, um, and God's done yeah. that for me, not in a blind way of just going, okay, God, show me. Yeah. But just that I was very, like, I really want to do this, I really want to do this, mm -hmm. and God, I couldn't seem to get assurance from God that I should. Yeah. And then just in my regular reading, I came across some verses that mm -hmm. said, no, you shouldn't do that because this is what I'm calling you to do. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't, Stuart, do this, mm -hmm. but... Nor was it writing in the sky. No, but the, but the language of the scripture applied directly to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a call to a, a prophet in the Bible. And I don't equate myself with that prophet, but the words to him mm -hmm. were the words for me that I needed to hear. Yeah. Later, I found out that I could not have been a missionary anyway. Um, I didn't even realize that at the time, but I just was looking for, what it, God, what you want me to do in my life. That was, mm -hmm. that was the deal I wanted to be a missionary. And uh, God wouldn't let me do that yeah. As, physically. He said, no, you just go call other people to be missionaries. And, yeah. you, and, and so. And all are important. Yeah, yeah. And as a young man, when you realize 90% of us, 90% uh, of all Christian workers live in the United States, hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's unbalanced. And mm -hmm. you, we feel very uh, guilt. I feel very guilty for staying here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't feel guilty for staying here. Don't take that that way. I meant then I, I, I was like, can I go? And God says, no, I want you. And right. so I, I, I have pastored several people become missionaries and mm -hmm. my own kids included. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I see that, that, that yeah. I've, I've got a, a, a role, but that wasn't the exact mm -hmm. role. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. And God will do things like Discerning that. Discerning God's will. It's a, uh, I remember Henry Blackaby said something about that because um, he did a whole book yeah. uh, experiencing, experiencing God, God, knowing and doing the will of God. And I remember stepping through that and he, one of his points was if you, if you are having a hard time hearing from the Lord, you have a crisis at the core of your walk with the Lord. Right. You have a crisis. That's a serious yeah. issue. Um, so the number one thing to do, first and foremost, is be in the Word. And by right. that, it's, it's reading it on a regular basis. Right. That's every right. day. Don't wait and, until you're starving to go eat and, a meal. And, and don't, eat don't every spend day. one minute. Yeah. You know, up it by fives. Right. Keep doing it. it Study you a won't book. regret it. Um, we were talking about this yesterday about spiritual disciplines. Um, yeah, fasting. Yeah, and you know, one of the things I thought of was um, the guy that said, uh, Lord, I believe, help my, oh, my unbelief. unbelief. Right. And I've, I've really Good. taken that to heart about my prayer life in that, uh, sure, I do have doubts, but there's a big difference between saying, Lord, I believe, and then putting the blame on him. You got to help me with my unbelief. Right. It's both. Yeah. He does help that. So, Lord, I'm going to go... I'm going yeah. to do this, Lord bless it, and I'm going to listen to you. Right. It, it's both. It's yeah. never blaming God for, yeah, oh, I, I didn't get help, so I didn't do it. I don't, I, in, in life, I think this is generally true, but in Christian life, it's, it's especially true, and that is you have to always be open to change because mm -hmm. um, you can make a bad decision mm -hmm. or a wrong decision, uh, or, <laughs> and then <laughs> let's get really into high weeds, it may be the right decision, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. That's that's when you really got to know you're walking with the Lord, mm -hmm. because you're going. Everybody else is going. What are you doing? This is horrible. Why would you be doing it? Because mm -hmm. God told me to. But Jesus those tend to be the, rare. Jesus yeah. in the garden. Yeah. Lord, if there's any other way, yeah. And God said, Nope, this is it. Okay, I'll do your will. It's mm -hmm. not going to be easy, but I will do it. Yeah. And and we have to have that attitude, but we also have to be willing to hear God go. Get out, get out now. I didn't tell you to do that. You're an mm -hmm. idiot. Move. Right. Um, and, right. and I mean, I'm sure God speaks to you guys nicer than that, but he calls <laughs> me an idiot occasionally. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's all we're going to talk about today. Okay. So um, thank you for talking about sure. this. This is good stuff about discerning God's will. And um, thank you for joining us today for the recap. Read and your Bible. Yep. Pray fast. Yeah. Come yes. to church. That's a discipline. Give. Yep. Witness. We are going to see you Sunday, I hope. God yep. bless you. Goodbye. Shockers.